Hello, I'm Simon Cat. Nothing scares me, not even the government. You're probably wondering how long this whole frog suit war arc thing is going to last. And to that I say, I'll look into new hobbies eventually. But for now, I'm going to play a horror game to prove I'm not afraid of anything. <laughs> Luigi's Mansion was a launch title for the GameCube in 2001, and also released on the 3DS in 2018. I got the 3DS version shortly after it released. People like to whine about the 3DS version, but the few differences it does have are not nearly as big of a deal as most people say. To be fair, I haven't even played the original, so maybe I don't even have the right to talk about this game. But going back to the original version of some games can be rough, because yikes that character model looks like vomit. Luigi's Mansion is an action-adventure game of all things. I thought it was a place in Maine. No, it's not actually a horror game. The only thing that's ever scary in this game, and by extension the entire series, was this moment with the three deer heads. Now that I think about it, deer heads have always freaked me out my whole life. Luigi's Mansion showcases what the GameCube was all about perfectly, and that's simply creative and wacky games that took what you knew about beloved franchises and turned it on its head. Instead of launching with a new Mario game, we got a Luigi game in a haunted mansion. Good job, Nintendo. You got us. Luigi is no longer player two, now he's a Ghostbuster! Luigi won a mansion for a contest he didn't even enter. So in other words, Luigi won by doing absolutely nothing. Mario went to check out the mansion, but never returned. So Luigi tries to find him and quickly finds out the mansion is haunted. Luigi meets Professor Elvin Gadd, a scientist who researches the paranormal. E. Gadd is a very interesting character that specializes in appearing in this series and very little else, which is kind of a shame. He's not that well written in this game, but future installments would give him more personality. E. Gadd takes Luigi to his lab, where he turns ghosts into paintings to add to his gallery. Are we sure E. Gadd isn't the villain here? Anyway, E. Gadd gives Luigi the Poltergeist 3000, which can capture ghosts, but it kinda sucks. Literally. Ah uh, yes, the GameCube era. Also known as the era of the Mario Brothers wearing devices on their backs. Anyway, halfway through the game you find out that Mario is trapped in a painting. King Boo created a mansion that's just an illusion to lure Mario and Luigi to him so he could trap them in paintings. So King Boo obviously traps people in paintings because he's evil. That makes sense. So why does E. Gad trap ghosts in paintings? What are you hiding from us? Most of Luigi's mansion is catching ghosts and occasionally solving a simple puzzle to get a key that unlocks a new room, and repeat. It's a very linear and repetitive game, but that was actually an intentional design choice, and I'll explain why later. When you're not catching ghosts, you're checking furniture for money. I've never thought to do that before playing this game, and it shows because I didn't even realize there were $50 in my desk for a year. You would think money serves a pretty important purpose in a game like this, but the only thing it does is determine your rank at the end of the game. I like how if you avoid all the money in the game, Luigi gets a tent instead of a new mansion, and that's funny. You can also get fire, water, and ice elements to squirt out of the poltergeist. Most of the puzzles involving them can be solved by a 4 year old, but they do provide a cool rock paper scissors based weakness system for certain ghost types. Very funny. Of course the other half of this game is catching ghosts, which is an interesting game of tug of war. First you shine your flashlight on them, then you flick the control stick in the opposite direction you're facing while the ghost flails around. Things can get very chaotic very fast when there's a bunch of other ghosts attacking you. This is one of the most unique combat systems I've seen. There's really nothing else like it. Boos are also in this game, and they make me mad! There's one boo for each room in the mansion. So you're given a radar to detect what furniture the boo is hiding in, and you can only find them once the lights are on. You can't lock onto boos. Instead, they can move somewhat freely. This wouldn't be a problem if they didn't pass through walls all the time. Boos have such low health early game that it doesn't really matter. But late game, they can have up to 300 health, which leads to going back and forth between rooms constantly. It completely interrupts the pacing, sending it to a screeching halt. Sometimes booze will go to a room that takes you over a minute to get to, or worse, a room you haven't even unlocked yet. When the flying trend swat starts passing through walls, that's when I quit. There are many bosses called portrait ghosts, and there are a lot of them. This game wouldn't be nearly as remembered if it weren't for the portrait ghosts. They add some much needed personality to the game. They even all have interesting descriptions. Every portrait ghost has a unique, simple puzzle to solve in order to capture them, and there's quite a bit of variety. For example, in this one, the puzzle is actually just a Mario-themed music quiz. The final portrait ghost in this game is an artist who paints ghosts to life, which is how all the standard enemies you fight throughout the game came to be. The major boss fights are pretty good, with the exception of the third one. An easy way to experience not having funism is to fight Bulossus in Luigi's Mansion. 
You're supposed to split boo losses into a bunch of smaller boos so you can freeze them and suck them up. This doesn't become a problem until you have two or three left, because at that point it becomes incredibly annoying trying to freeze them because they're so good at dodging, and if you take too long, the remaining boos will turn into boo losses again. Something I'm surprised I haven't mentioned yet is the Game Boy Horror, which allows you to scan furniture items and hear Luigi's thoughts on them. I've always wanted one of these. I could have gone my whole life without knowing that. I'm willing to bet there's something cold in there. Wait, really? What a hunk of junk. You expect me to sit on that? Please, I have standards. Could be worse. You can finish the game without using this feature once, but I still appreciate its inclusion because again, it adds personality. There's also a button dedicated to saying, Mario! And Luigi hums to the song. The lower your health is, the more it sounds like Luigi's going insane. Mario! Even Luigi's humming sounds more nervous on low health. It's details like these that make this game so memorable. Other things that make this game memorable are the hidden mechanics and secret rooms we as a society somehow discovered. For example, scanning a mirror warps you directly to the foyer. Why? Well, I think the real question here is why not? There are two very well hidden rooms full of treasure. To get to the first one, you simply scan this mouse hole in the butler's room, and yeah, that's what I call a jackpot. The second one is behind this door on the second floor, but it's blocked off. The solution? Go to the roof and jump down the chimney, of course. Oh yeah, but the door is blocked off. I really didn't think this through. Luckily, there's a mirror in the room, but easily the most memorable part of Luigi's Mansion is the power outage. Near the end of the game, the power goes out, which means all the rooms you've cleared become dark again. This is the closest Luigi's Mansion gets to being a horror game. If you're not very experienced, this moment can be legitimately intense. Nowhere is safe, you don't know where you're going, and three more ghosts are spawning every second. In my opinion, the power outage is a much better oh I'm in big trouble moment than Fury Bowser waking up. Easily the most critiqued aspect of Luigi's Mansion back when it first released was the length, being only three to six hours. You can play the whole game in an afternoon, but I'm pretty sure this length was intentional. Luigi's Mansion is an arcade game. Think about it. It's a very short game, so you can easily finish it in one sitting, and your rank is determined by how much money you collect, so there's always room for improvement. Luigi's Mansion just might be one of the most replayable games ever made. King Boo is apparently such a master illusionist that for the final boss, he summons Bowser. It's actually pretty creepy because the fight involves decapitating him. After capturing King Boo, Luigi takes Mario's painting back to Egad's lab to free him from the painting. It's such a nice ending with Luigi tearing up while laughing hysterically. Oh, and of course the money Luigi found is used to build him a new mansion. So if Luigi has 100 million dollars, Princess Peach is most likely a billionaire. Luigi's mansion might not seem all that important compared to other Mario games, but it's actually the most influential Mario spinoff of all time. And by influential, I don't mean being a cultural phenomenon. That title goes to Mario Kart. Luigi's Mansion is influential in the sense that the main series Mario games would be missing something without it, and that special ingredient is Luigi. Before Luigi's Mansion, Luigi was just green Mario, but now Luigi is the easily frightened guy who's commonly associated with ghosts. Luigi is an actual character with interesting personality traits. The day Nintendo gives Mario interesting personality traits is the day Galaxy 2 gets re-released. At the end of the day, Luigi's Mansion is more of a one-off experiment. If it were to get a sequel, it would need quite a few gameplay refinements. I don't think we truly understand just how rich Luigi is. I mean, he could one day decide to buy Canada for all we know.